Hello, everyone. All right, I am back with a book review. Real Magic by Dean Radin, PhD. Ancient Wisdom, Modern Science, and a Guide to the Secret Power of the Universe. So all kinds of books sound like that, maybe, but this is a really, really good book. And I just have to say, five out of five stars, unbelievable. Wow, life-changing information is in this book. We all uh, hear ideas like everything is pure consciousness in yoga philosophy, everything is in the mind, but it's really great when someone can actually like do the science and do the studies to actually prove that that is the case, and that is what has happened in this book. I first followed this guy, Dean Radin. I've been following his work since 2010, when I first read a book that mentioned him. And he has done he has done studies on psi or psychic abilities and psychic effects or cities as we call it in India. Um, he's done research on this, lots and lots and lots of research on it for decades. And you know this is not his only book. He's written a number of books about this, but this is his latest one, and it's just amazing. Um, in this book, there is here I'll show you the table of contents. He goes into, you know, the beginning of magic. He goes into science and magic. What's the difference? So he basically, you know, explains how psychic effects and magic are the same and that there actually is already a lot of science that has investigated this and studied it. Uh, magical potpourri, uh, origins of magic. This is kind of going into the background of magic, the practice of magic, how it actually works, how people have done magic in... Um, the occult traditions over time. He goes into like affirmations, force of will type magic, sigils. These are all just like kind of the Western counterparts to a lot of what, uh, you know, what we are familiar with in yogic or tantric practices with mantra, yantras, visualization. Um, uh, yeah, there's just a lot of corollaries and depending on where you're at in your studies, you might appreciate these, you know, corollaries or you may not. So if you think you would, you should get this book. Um, then we get to the real meat of the book. Basically, about 100 pages in, this book just starts becoming amazing. So the first 100 pages are kind of slow. Going into, like, what is magic, the background, blah, blah, blah. Well, Webster defines magic as this, or, you know, that sort of thing. But uh, it's actually even very good in that regard. And I wanted to know a little bit about the history of magic because I am in an occult field myself. Um, Scientific evidence, though. Wow, this is just such a good chapter. I want to reread it because I can't even retain it all. But they basically, um, he he goes into all this evidence, all this research they've done, you know, meta analysis of you know studies that have gone back to the 70s. Uh, blessed chocolate. They prove how blessed chocolate is a real thing um, and has been, you know, proven to be to have an effect. Uh, the cool thing is that basically like they do they did effects on psychic abilities like that could be noticed but also things that couldn't even be noticed like literally someone visualizing giving someone a massage in a room and it's a stranger and they never met that person and they were f monitoring that person's physiology and literally what happened to their body was the exact physiological like levels of relaxation and like lowering of stress and lowering of metabolic rates it was the exact same thing that happens when they did physically get a massage and they you know tested that and saw the exact same things happening um, they also yeah they go into a lot of stuff like that so it's just amazing that it's proving how like you know faith healing how the placebo effect how positive visualization how all these things really do work like they just plain work and the thing is they work better when you see the evidence if you're a doubtful person because um, I'm not even that much of a doubtful person but I'm a scientific you know I have that mind of critical person but I have a lot of faith I already believed all this stuff it was just great seeing it like critically examined and seeing that it was true um, and then that's even one of the studies in here is that remote viewing um, and things like that. Remote viewing actually works much better if you believe it's possible. Um, and so they even go into that in this chapter on the scientific evidence. They go into, you know, mediums and they study the brains of mediums. 
and they found that it was true that mediums are in a state of consciousness that is not the same as one when they are lying or deceiving themselves or just imagining like different parts of the brain are being used it's really interesting um, they did they, they went into the studies on you know psychics being able to tell if someone is dead or alive um, and you know uh, theurgy even um, yeah, voodoo testing. They tested voodoo and things in this. Um, it's 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 really really fascinating. Uh, th towards the end of the book, there's even a section on um, what does he call it? Uh, Merlin class magicians. Yeah. So towards the end, he gives you um, at least three examples of of uh, magicians who were historically documented over and over and over and were on this tremendous Merlin-like level. And one of them was even a guy in recent times named Ted Owens. And the stories and accounts of this guy, Ted Owens, is just nutty. It's wild. Um, really fun reading. And then uh, then the final part is, you know, toward a science of magic, kind of gives some information about how science and magic are kind of coming together, how in the last recent decade, there's been a lot more of a shift towards allowing scientists to think about consciousness in new ways. And he goes into how hard it is for how hard it was for him to get his studies published, like all the studies they talk about in uh, in this book. They talk about how mainstream science journals just yank them without any excuse. They just couldn't accept the idea that the 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 fact that this conflicted with the materialism idea in science. And so the basically like the the last chapter goes into like what is science really saying? Like what is materialism saying? And they kind of like tear it apart, you know? They kind of tear apart how you know <laughs> uh the scientific worldview is just not holding up to a lot of the new evidence that quantum physics shows and that all these things show. So that's a really really cool section of this book. Um goes into all these big studies that have come out in major journals like Nature or all these like major scientific journals. And there's even some really cool little like graphs and things uh, he throws in. And at first I was like, ooh, I don't like that graph. That's not correct. And then later he shows like the more correct graph. And I was like, yes, that's exactly what I wanted. That's correct. And that's like kind of the model that they come up with at the end of the book. So it's really neat. Um, a lot of really... Uh, a lot of really neat stuff in this book. So one of the best books I've read um, in the last couple years. So definitely get this book, Real Magic. Um, you won't be disappointed. You know, there's one where he he goes into uh, random number generators, and that's how they did a lot of work. And they studied like 9-11 or these weird points when a lot of the collective consciousness was very freaked out and worried and afraid. And these random number generators literally like, they truly are random because electricity is just f is just flowing into different circuits and what's fascinating is that yeah this is always going to be random and they test it and then on days like 9-11 when that happened or on these big days when something awful was happened the 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 number generating isn't as random it stops being random and it starts going more in a single direction and it seems as and what they you know they're what they conclude is that it seems as though there really is a collective consciousness and at that on that day there was so much stress or so much energy in one direction that it was literally affecting the currents of electricity you know what I mean it was literally affecting uh, the way that random number generators sequenced their numbers so this books really fascinating um, and he has other books as well at the end he touches on Siddhis and yoga and magic and you know how it's kind of funny because in yoga philosophy, siddhis are not what we should strive for. And they're kind of like just a symptom or a side effect that can be dangerous even of you waking up. But, it's, but he talks about how in the Western tradition, that's sort of like the goal, uh, strangely enough. And that says a lot about different cultures and such. Anyways, you think for yourself on it. Read this book. Uh, you know, tell me what you think. If you have read it, please leave a comment. You know, give me your thoughts on it. This guy, Dean Radin's great. He's written some other books. I'm definitely probably going to check out his book, um, Super Normal. The, at the end, at the back, Science, Yoga, and the Evidence for Extraordinary Psychic Abilities. I'm sure that's good, too. <laughs> All right. Thanks, you guys.